uh, it will be uh, slightly different from uh, uh, yesterday, but uh, th there's a relationship uh, with uh, what I was discussing uh, yesterday. So, well, in fact, uh, the setting is the following. So we'll consider, uh, I'll start with just one, uh, uh, one Riemann surface and with uh, n functions. So uh, let's see how the uh, Riemann um, surface of uh, genus G N, uh, N puncture, and uh, well, I'll assume that N is greater than zero, so that's where uh, the result will be uh, uh, new. Or and uh, so we'll also assume that uh, 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 so. Uh, condition is to have a nice uh, work moduli space. Okay. And um, so on, on such a surface, uh, so the complex structure uh, define a conformal uh, structure. And in this conformal class, there's a unique uh, uh, metric, hyperbolic, which is uh, looks like a cusp at each end. So uh, we, we have a we can put the, uh, maybe I don't want to draw all the cusps, but <coughs> you, you can put the metric uh, so that all the puncture, uh, the metric will look like a cusp metric puncture. So, so uh, on, on sigma, there is a, a unique uh, <coughs> hyperbolic metric. So in the conformal class, uh, and, uh, uh, in the conformal class, of the complex structure, And uh, well, what I'm about to say, I'll briefly review what is a, a cusp. Uh, probably it will be uh, uh, known by uh, all of you. But uh, just to uh, repeat things that uh, will maybe clarify things later. So uh, uh, the model for a cusp uh, you, uh, in, uh, in the hyperbolic plane, uh, the cusp is modeled. Uh, can be modeled as follows. So, uh, <coughs> uh, in H, uh, with a metric uh, given by so the hyperbolic metric on the upper F plane, uh, a cusp uh, is uh, obtained. Looking at the, the quotient with respect to uh, uh, the group gun infinity generated uh, by uh, Z is sent to uh, Z plus one with uh, as, uh, Z is just uh, X plus I one. Yeah. So um, x have y, and then uh, here it's uh, x is equal to 1. So when I'm modeled by the action of this group, I, I'm left with this trip. And the cusp, uh, well, the, the old thing would be uh, called a horn, but uh, the cusp uh, so is uh, would be that region up to infinity. So. <coughs> 
So in the region y, uh, y bigger than, uh, say, some positive constant a, so it doesn't really matter. So it will just uh, specify how big is my cusp. Um, we, we get a, a cusp. Okay, so the metric is uh, just this metric. And well, of course, it's hyperbolic. Uh, it's come from the hyperbolic plane. And uh, so the coordinate, uh, though, I, I want to use, and the, the metric, the way I wrote the metric uh, yesterday, is instead to consider. Uh, so, so we use uh, in, instead the, the coordinates. Uh, well, theta uh, it would be the same as uh, as x, but I think of it modulo uh, uh, modulo the, the, the integer, oh, sorry. like a variable on the circle, and uh, y uh, I'll replace it by uh, one over uh, y. So in this case, uh, what we get is that uh, so the metric becomes uh, the the one I wrote uh, yesterday. So, um, so what, what what you see is that uh, the it has a finite area. So, the G uh, is uh, the the volume uh, or the area form is uh, dr d theta. So you can integrate it up to infinity. Uh, it turns out to be complete al also. And uh, in fact, the function r uh, gives you the the area of the cusp. Uh, so uh, if you think of R as uh, uh, everything, so um, <coughs> so basically uh, R is the same as the, the area from zero to R of, uh, and then the from zero to one uh, dg. Okay, so if I integrate up to R, what I get is R, and then that's the area. So your boundary defining function, you can think of it as the giving you the, the, the area of the cusp, so sort of more uh, geometric. And uh, well, on such a Riemann surface, uh, uh, so for, uh, for K, the canonical uh, line bundle, we, uh, We will uh, uh, consider uh, bar operators acting on uh, tensor product of this uh, line bundle. So we noted d bar L, so acting on smooth section uh, of K uh, raised to the well, tensor power. So L copy of uh, K. Or uh, well, L, L could be uh, positive or, or negative, and so it will map it into uh, some uh, okay. And um, so ultimately, uh, I, I will be interested to have a family of those uh, of those operators. So I'll change the complex structure, and we'll look at what happened for a family of these operator. And uh, I mean the reason why we focus on this line bundle in particular is that since, well, it's the canonical uh, line bundle, this one uh, is defined for automatically for each complex structure. So we have, uh, when you change the complex structure, you'll have a smooth family of line bundles. So that's the reason why uh, <coughs> this sort of line bundle is uh, more uh, interesting uh, in, in uh, this context. And, um, so <coughs> what I want is to use the, the machinery I uh, was discussing uh, yesterday to study the index. Um, but I want first to explain uh, that for just a single operator, uh, well, in fact, uh, you don't need uh, the machinery I'm going to use. 
uh, well, you can simply use uh, the, the Riemann Roch theorem. Okay. Uh, so, um, as I will describe uh, or explain briefly in, in a moment, so you, you, this, this operator turns out to be Fredholm uh, in an appropriate uh, sense. So, it, its index is defined, so the kernel and co kernel are uh, finite dimensional. Um, and uh, so, um, if you, uh, if, but if you want to find what's, uh, for instance, the kernel of this uh, operator, so they correspond to holomorphic function uh, or holomorphic section of this bundle, uh, which are, uh, so in this uh, functional analytic context, which are uh, L2, so in the L2 space defined by the metric. Um, so, um, well. So, uh, uh, well, we can uh, well ask uh, this uh, easy question: What, what, what sh should it be? And uh, instead of uh, uh, so, the way to use Riemann-Roch is that uh, so. Um, this cusp, you can use, uh, so there's the coordinate is Z that uh, I introduced earlier on, so the, the local model I gave for the cusp. So uh, near the cusp, um, an element, uh, say, a, a function f uh, in that uh, kernel is of the form, so it's, it's holomorphic by definition. So. And so it will have a, in fact, a power series. So, uh, so I'll, raised to the power k. So in fact, the, the natural variable to consider uh, uh, or near the cost uh, so near a, a puncture or cost, near the cost we can use uh, the new uh, variable which is given by e to the 2 pi i Z and uh, <coughs> so uh, and then well that's basically zeta here and uh, so I'll focus uh, just on one case but uh, so for uh, L uh, greater or equal to one uh, for uh, for F uh, to be in L2 we need to start uh, with uh, k uh, greater or equal to 1. So here, k mysterious uh, where k starts and goes to, to infinity. Uh, but if you want it to be in L2, uh, when L is greater than equal to 1, uh, so the, the metric is uh, you can integrate up to uh, 0. But uh, when L is positive, you need some decay. Uh, at infinity uh, for th this factor. So uh, uh, f, f of z will be of this form. Okay. Or uh, if you translate in this uh, variable uh, zeta, so uh, it's of the form uh, zeta k. And uh, well, that, that's the point of view that allows you to just use Riemann Rock uh, to, to, to show that, uh, to, to understand what was the index. Okay, so, what we see in this case is that uh, uh, ends, uh, you 
means the, in, in this case, the, the kernel of d bar L intersect with L2 uh, correspond to uh, meromorphic function uh, uh, section sorry, of uh, KL with uh, poles of degree at most. Uh, so here we have pole of degree L, but uh, since it started k is equal to 1, so it's degree uh, at most L minus 1 of degree uh, uh, at uh, each function. Okay, so then you can use uh, Riemann rock, and so what you find is that uh, uh, you can find the, the dimension of the, this kernel. Uh, we understood the, the uh, L to one, and uh, so well, I think if I recall something like this, okay, so applying applying Riemann rock, uh, so that's what you get if uh, L is greater than two. Um, well, uh, so uh, for simplicity, I just focused on one case, but L equal to zero, uh, you can do the, you can also apply Riemann rock, but it's, it's a slightly different version because you have to include K is equal to zero, uh, also for L negative. Uh, yeah, I think the case where L is negative, instead of having poles, you, you get uh, that it has to vanish there. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you, you get uh, this when L is equal to 1. I think you, you get this when L is equal to 0. So that I didn't do, but again, you can do it similarly. And then it turns out to be 0 for uh, L, L negative. And uh, you can similarly compute. Uh, the dimension of the co-kernel, uh, or, or in fact, uh, it turns out that uh, so using uh, self self duality, <coughs> we uh, also have uh, that uh, so the dimension of the the co-kernel, in fact, or the kernel of the adjoint. <coughs> is equal to the kernel of d bar, but I think it's 1 minus L, something like this. OK. So uh, if you just have one operator, then the best way, I, I believe, to uh, understand the, the index is just applying Riemann rock. Um, but uh, uh, since I, I want to attack the family problem and then the other, another technique will be will turn out to be uh, useful. Uh, I'll describe another way to compute the index uh, that at the moment will seems more like uh, killing a fly with a baseball bat, but um, uh, then it will be uh, uh, become more useful uh, uh, later. Uh, so, um, uh, So we can think of the D-bar operator as uh, Dirac or really twisted Dirac or Dirac type operator. Okay. And uh, well, that, that's uh, uh, standard in a way. So um, uh, what we have is. Uh, the Dirac operator will be given by, uh, I think it is uh, always this coefficient uh, root of 2. And uh, so I put the adjoint and uh, uh, together. And so if I put them together in this way, uh, the operator I get 
can be seen as a, a Dirac operator with Clifford multiplication uh, given our uh, Dirac operator with uh, or induced by the Clifford multiplication Given by um, let's, uh, let's, uh, Yeah, so it basically that's using the exterior product, but of the zero one part of f, and then you use the interior product for the one zero part of it. So it satisfies the Clifford relation that you take the square, etc. So it, you, well, that that that's a, s a standard uh, fact about the rec operator. So it modelizes uh, p bar operator, and um, so. Uh, Now I want to make it fit into uh, uh, the. Oh, uh, sorry. So uh, I guess F is um, uh, a f one form. C means Clifford multiplication, and U is uh, a section of the bundle on on which uh, on which it acts. So I guess. Uh, DL uh, will act on smooth fun smooth section of uh, I think that will be uh, the constant plus the zero one part of uh, sigma tensor with KL. So uh, the the D bar operator act from the constant function, uh, well, not constant, but from function into uh, zero one section, and then this is tensor with KL, and the, the adjoint will map from there to there. So, uh, <laughs> so it has a, this diagonal form. So the the index. So when you think we, when you talk about the index of the Dirac operator, you really think about the Dirac of this operator because the the whole thing is self adjoint, so it has no uh, interesting a index. Uh, well, let's say uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll use the notation uh, that you you use exterior prod uh, you you wedge the the zero one part the zero one part of the form uh, with with you and you is a section of, of this. Uh, this this term, it's uh, yota, so it means it's uh, you instead you you take the. Uh, the entire product. So, uh, so if you have a part like this, then you you sort of uh, annihilate it and gets back to uh, just a function. And of course, there's the KL in the picture. But yeah, so the Clifford multiplication is basically the the symbol of the this Dirac operator. Uh, so the reason why I want to talk about uh, Dirac operator is that uh, this, this result of uh, Vaillant that found an uh, index term for Dirac operator. So I want to recast the uh, Dirac operator in, in that setting to be able to apply uh, the, the theorem. And uh, so one part is, uh, I was discussing it uh, yesterday, is to, um, so let's say I have just one cusp uh, for the moment. Think the picture. So um, what you can do is uh, fill the puncture with uh, with the point, and then you can blow it up. Not uh, well, in just in the sense of Mero, so introducing polar coordinates and and get uh, uh, something like this. I think so, as I was uh, describing uh, yesterday. 
So uh, the boundary here, so we get a, a new surface, uh, sigma tilde, and uh, the boundary corresponds to uh, the region where uh, r, this boundary uh, infinite function, is equal to 0. Okay, so I just extend to get the circle uh, at infinity or at, at the cost. And um, so if I, I look at uh, just the d bar operator uh, with no, no L, to give you an idea, uh, so, uh, so the d bar operator, uh, I'm thinking local coordinates, something of that sort, uh, if I ex make it explicit in terms of the coordinates, so uh, maybe yeah, I'll, I should put the dc bar here. So, um, so it's dx plus uh, minus i dy times one half. Okay. And uh, well, I, I introduce these coordinates uh, y uh, r is one over y. So to see how it looks in these coordinates, so what I get is uh, d theta plus i dr over r square and then times one half minus okay. And uh, now we'll uh, put a factor r on this side and or exchange a factor r with both term. Uh, so I'll explain why in a moment. So the, the reason is that uh, then uh, the one form here uh, has bounded length uh, uniformly uh, with respect to the, the cost metric. And similarly, the vector field here has uh, bounded length at infinity in terms of the cost vector field. So it's the natural or sort of vector field and sort of form to consider with respect to this uh, metric. So the, here there's a 1 over r, but in the metric there's r d theta, so uh, it's kind of a sort of finite length. And um, so the, maybe the, the thing is uh, that you, you can think of uh, uh, so we uh, so the, the, the vector field uh, uh, is this a plus i. Uh, as a bounded uh, land with uh, respect to uh, it's normal with respect to the well the norm induced by the metric uniformly as one goes to uh, infinity or one uh, approaches the cost <coughs> and uh, well we can think so I'll be a bit vague about this uh, uh, but we can think of uh, the other term this. Uh, Here? Oh, uh. <coughs> oh, here. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <coughs> then there's an I, yeah. Okay, so the, the this part, um, so what I want to do is think of it as a, a section of the canonical line bundle, but in fact a, of a version of the canonical line bundle that extends up to the boundary. Okay, so, uh, okay, so I think of this, so if I think of it as, as a section of the can, can usual canonical line bundle, uh, it becomes degenerate. Uh, 
as one approach uh, for gas, but there's this uh, one over R over there that creates a problem. But uh, you can redefine a, a notion, uh, if you declare this as a section of the canonical line bundle up to the, up to the boundary, so any other section locally would be obtained by multiplying by a complex uh, value add function uh, up to the boundary, then you can define a new bundle which <coughs> in the interior uh, agree with the canonical line bundle but is also defined up to the boundary. And uh, so then we can think of, uh, uh, then, uh, so the operator you can think of uh, as act acting on uh, so I'll put the tilde here or maybe on this on the surface and uh, uh, whoops sorry so here I guess it's uh, it's supposed to be, it's not the canonical line bundle, it's supposed to be, uh, sorry, I, I was a bit confused. Yeah, it's a zero one, but then if you take the, the conjugate of it, you, you get the canonical line bundle, and so there's a similar extension for, for this. And uh, so this sort of operator, uh, so where the, the bundle in which they act, they are defined up to the, the boundary somehow, they, they were studied by, uh, uh, by Boris Vaillant, uh, using this E kernel uh, that I was mentioning yesterday. So these uh, th or this uh, type of uh, operators was uh, studied by uh, Vaillant. Um, and so uh, it's in a wider con con context, and not only for Riemann supers with cusp, but in fact manifold with cusp uh, more generally, uh, or uh, manifold with fiber cusp. And it doesn't have to come from complex geometry, so it, it like, has to be some, some sort of Dirac operator. Yeah, well, yeah, let, let, let's think of it as acting uh, in, in, the, in the interior of the, the, uh, the, inter the inter interior of this uh, surface with, uh, with that boundary. Um, but so in, in, in this theory, it's important that the bundle is defined up to the, up to the boundary uh, uh, because uh, you need to have uh, a good notion of what are the asymptotics uh, at infinity and basically in this approach, those lives on the boundary. So that's in that sense. Um. <coughs> okay, so. Um. Um. Yeah, so the, the first question is, uh, when is uh, such an operator uh, fretal? Uh, so it, it's not always the case. Uh, so it's, that's an elliptic operator. Uh, the symbol is given by the, the incremental multiplication. But uh, since it's a non-compact setting, the behavior at infinity is uh, crucial in determining when such an operator is uh, fretal. Um, and uh, so. Um, So uh, one consider the operator uh, dv, which is obtained by uh, taking r times. Uh, so now I'm assuming there's just one cusp, but if there's many, you can do this as each cusp uh, separately. So you take your uh, your uh, or maybe I'll put it uh, this way. Uh, so you multiply by R uh, and um, so uh, so in, in that setting the, the part uh, involving derivative uh, 
So it's of the form uh, 1 over r d d theta. And then uh, it, it involves vector field of this form and of this form. Yeah. Okay. So if I want to restrict, uh, so because I sort of artificially make the bundle extend up to the boundary, then to restrict the operator uh, to the boundary, I need to first multiply by r to get rid of this 1 over r here. Okay. But then when I do this, I can then restrict to uh, the boundary uh, of that opaque phosphor boundary. And this will act from, uh, uh, a small function on, uh, and then, uh, um, well, section of, Everything restricted to the boundary. Okay. And uh, so, if uh, if this operator is invertible, then basically you, you can construct a a parametrix or or an approximate inverse for the uh, the rack operator. Um, which will be compact. So from this, you you, you can conclude that uh, uh, well, first this operator is a, a, a uh, <coughs> then uh, uh, <coughs> uh, then DL is uh, frenum, and since the parametrix in fact is uh, uh, is compact. Uh, uh, it has discrete spectrum. So although it's a, a non-compact setting, it's a situation where the operator uh, has a discrete spectrum. Uh, well, yeah, uh, that's a general uh, statement. It doesn't have to be this operator. It's a Dirac operator in this sort of context. And uh, well, in our case, uh, though the, the, this vertical operator on the boundary is not uh, is not invertible, <coughs> so the, the operator on the boundary it's very simple. Uh, it's um, Yeah, it's in fact this operator is a I think uh, here forget not forget something. And then acting on the corresponding bundle. So basically uh, forgetting about the clipper manipulation is just uh, uh, well you have to make it self adjoint, but it's just derivative along the circle. Okay, so the spectrum uh, turns out to be uh, uh, with a spectrum, uh, I guess is, uh, I think it's z or 2 pi z, uh, forget the convention for the circle. But, uh, two pi z, yeah, I think, yeah. two pi z, I think my circle have length one. Uh. Yeah, well, in any case, uh, two pi or not two pi, uh, the zero would be in the spectrum. So the constant function are are, are um, in the kernel, so that's not invertible. But uh, well, the the good news uh, in in this situation is that uh, even if this is not invertible, uh, it, there's still a possibility for the operator to be uh, frenal. And uh, it's because there's uh, another operator on the boundary. Uh, that uh, can detect if the operator is frenum or not. So if this is invertible, it's frenum. And then if it's not invertible, uh, we still have to investigate further. Okay, so, uh, so if uh, the kernel of this uh, restriction to the, the, the boundary is uh, not trivial, we can define another operator uh, 
Uh, so yeah, so V stands for vertical and H stands for horizontal. But unfortunately, in this simple context of uh, uh, just Riemann surface with cusp, you don't really feel the horizontal direction. But, um, it, yeah. And uh, so it, it will act uh, from the kernel of this operator to itself. Okay. So in other contexts, when it's fiber cusp instead of cusp, uh, that will turn out to be really a Dirac operator. And uh, so these will be a family of uh, vertical operator. But in this case, it will just turn out to be a, a matrix. Okay. So, and it's, it's defined uh, as follows. So if we let uh, uh, phi 0 to be the, the projection, from this to uh, maybe I'll, I'll call this bundle uh, uh, E and then restrict it to E sigma tilde just to save time. Okay, so I can project to uh, just the kernel of, uh, of the operator. Okay, so here it's just projection on constant function, constant section. And uh, so what we do is to define this operator is uh, if you take uh, C, uh, an element of the kernel, so let uh, C tilde be uh, an extension to, uh, to sigma. So it's defined on the boundary, and then you just extend uh, this uh, function to be defined also in the interior the way you want. Okay, so it turns out it doesn't matter. And um, and then you define the operator. As follows, so you define um, uh, VHL to be um, so you apply your uh, Dirac operator to this uh, section, then uh, you restrict to the boundary again, and then you project back onto the uh, the, spec, the, the, the kernel. Okay, so, so yeah, the boundary is a circle. Okay. Yeah. So if there's more cuffs, there's many circles, but you do this at each circle uh, independent. Okay. And uh, so now here's the criterion. Uh, Of uh, I R, so, and if this one is up, uh, is invertible, then uh, the Dirac operator is Frenon. Okay, so, uh, with. Uh, But this time it will have a uh, the it will have uh, the spectrum will have a continuous part with uh, so with uh, bands of uh, continuous spectrum starting uh, at uh, each. Eigenvalue uh, of uh, of this oper operator and uh, going to uh, infinity. Okay, so I think it's understood that if the eigenvalue is negative, then the con the band of continuous spectrum will go to minus infinity. And uh, okay. So uh, well in. in in our case, uh, so for the this operator, um, uh, VHL uh, will be equal to uh, something very simple. So it's uh, L minus one half times I C E theta. So uh, acting on this bundle E. So it's just Clifford multiplication. Uh, OK, 
Okay, so uh, in particular, since L, uh, we don't allow L to be uh, uh, half an integer, or we don't allow L to be one half, this is always invertible. So you, I think you can allow L to be half an integer, so uh, the square root of the canonical line bundle will, or a choice of square root for the canonical line bundle, uh, correspond to a spin, a spinner bundle, and uh, so you'd get uh, some Dirac operator associated to it, but uh, in that case, uh, what will happen is that uh, it will fail to be uh, frenal. Okay, so uh, then, uh, okay, so um, for, for this operator, Vaillant got the uh, index formula. Okay, so uh, okay, so I'll apply the theorem to this uh, specific case, uh, this, this operator, but it's true. Uh, uh, so the, the index of the operator in this case is given by the, the usual uh, term, uh, which is given by, uh, like I guess it's the churn character of uh, KL times the dot class. Okay, so you, uh, oops. And then uh, there's two other uh, there's two other corrections that are uh, eta invariant. So there's the eta invariant of the uh, vertical operator and the eta invariant of the horizontal uh, direction. Okay. And uh, well, let me briefly sketch uh, not not the proof, but how the index formula came about. Uh, from the picture about the eat space uh, <coughs> draw yesterday. So uh, if you recall, there was this uh, square root of t, and then there were three faces, so rho, or I guess here it's r, and so r, uh, r prime, and then there was three blow up, so one like this, and then So that one was the, uh, I guess it was the temporal face, the boundary face, and then the cost face. Okay. And um, so the one way to prove uh, index term for Dirac operators to use uh, eat kernel uh, methods. Okay. So the idea is that when you let the eat equation for the square of the Dirac operator evolve, at infinity it converges to uh, the kernel uh, of the operator, and so the since it involves d bar and d bar star, it will involve the kernel and the co-kernel. So basically, at infinity, it gives the index. And then to get the formula, what you do is uh, you notice that uh, so in a compact case, the trace or the super trace of the heat kernel doesn't change, doesn't depend on time. And then you take a limit as t goes to zero to get the index containing this super trace uh, localized. So uh, when there's, there's not these faces, uh, there's a way to localize the index uh, on that face, and it becomes an integral uh, on the manifold. Basically, okay, so it's quite a delicate operation. Uh, and uh, in this setting, um, it's not true. Uh, so the super trace changes with time, uh, and it's because basically uh, the there's some commutator argument that don't work anymore in this non-compact setting. So the failure to uh, uh, stay uh, unchanged with time uh, lives on that face. Okay. So on that face, you get uh, the contribution from the eta form of the horizontal operator. So there, there's the heat kernel of this, uh, this operator, so the operator on the boundary. 
on the cos phase, uh, but then otherwise um, things localize. It localizes over there, but it also localizes at the cusp somehow. So here we get the contribution from uh, the vertical operator, and here you get the, the, the churn character and then times the, the top class. Okay, so the, the usual sort of contribution for uh, the Atia Singer index theorem. And uh, so these two parts are seen as localization, uh, localization, and this is seen more as a defect for the super trace to uh, not depend on time. So that, that basically uh, the, the context where you, you, you can get uh, this uh, sort of uh, formula. And um, maybe let me expand a, a bit. Uh, in fact, in this case, uh, uh, what are those uh, eta invariants? They, they are very easy to compute. Okay, so, so here, uh, so the eta invariant of uh, DL is just zero. Okay. Because the spectrum is Z and the eta invariant is the spectral asymmetry. So it computes uh, uh, in a regularized way the, the number of positive eigenvalue minus the number of negative eigenvalue. And in this case, uh, the number are equal, so you, you get zero. And uh, uh, for the the horizontal one, uh, that that's uh, easy. So there's only one eigenvalue basically. So you, you can forget about this. So it's l minus one half. And uh, s when there's n costs, you'll get n of these uh, eigenvalue. And so depending whether uh, this is positive or negative, the I Eta invariant will be positive or negative okay, because the, so you'll get uh, n times the sign of this number. Okay. So uh, it's easy to compute in this case. Uh, so there, there would be line bundle in the family case, no? But uh, um, okay, yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. So uh, now I come to the really what I wanted to talk today. So what happened in the, the family case? So family version. Uh, so to have this sort of technique will uh, now pay off, uh, I would say, in the, the case where you have a family of these. So, uh, <coughs> so now we'll, uh, so we'll co I'll consider the Teichmuller space of all uh, uh, puncture remind surface of genus G with uh, n puncture. So uh, let uh, T be n. The Teichmuller space of uh, Riemann uh, surfaces of uh, genus G with the uh, n puncture. Curly uh, G n be the universal uh, Teichmuller curve. Okay, so uh, basically, that that's the that's the vibration over. The Teichmuller space. So here's my Teichmuller space, and then I have the Teichmuller curve above it, and the uh, vibration. Uh, so the fiber is a uh, Riemann surface with n puncture and of genus G. Okay, so uh, so phi inverse of uh, so. Uh, Inverse the, the fiber above uh, sigma 
for uh, similar uh, class in the Taj Mahal space, or representative of uh, <coughs> the no surface, is uh, is a uh, Riemann uh, Riemann surface. Sigma representing uh, <coughs> the the class sigma. So the well the because I imagine everyone is very comfortable with the uh, Taj space, much uh, more comfortable than I, I can be. Uh, but well. So it's basically it's equivalent class of Riemann surface uh, that we say that they are equivalent if there exists a, a deformism relating the two complex structure, but the deformism which is uh, the edit identity component of the deformism group. And uh, well, so that the Tashmer space uh, is a complex manifold. Uh, it's, uh, it's not well, really, really well. Uh, Studied, um, so <coughs> uh, basically you, you can uh, you can look at these functions on the surface and you can blow them up in each fiber, fiber-wise, and uh, maybe you can just put instead the Riemann surface with boundary over there. Okay, so I'll I'll be a bit quick on this. Uh, so it's like magic. Uh, it <laughs> it <laughs> just works, but uh, it turns out you you can do it. So. Uh, the well, here the, the fiber, uh, you might imagine uh, something like this. Okay. And uh, so for uh, each uh, boundary, you get uh, uh, you get the bundle so get uh, uh, so each uh, each function so uh, really uh, boundary define a circle bundle that denote t uh, di of the so Taj Mahal curve, and it lives over the Taj Mahal space. And so for each puncture, I can track. Uh, so I guess I'm considering the case where the puncture are, are labeled, so I, I can distinguish between them. Um, and so when I restrict to the money, I get a corresponding circle bundle over the, the Taj Mahal space. Okay. And uh, well, without uh, giving too much detail about this, there's a, a natural notion of connection Tashmer space, and it, it extends also for this uh, up to this circle. So you, you get a circle bundle with a natural connection uh, on it. Uh, that, that's important to have this connection uh, around because we the, the the next formula we get will be uh, local, and so it means that uh, it will be at the level of form. And then if you don't have a meaningful connection to compute curvature, having it local would wouldn't be so uh, helpful. Uh, I, I, it, so the, the way you the way you define it is you can use uh, given a point on the tangent space you can use bare coordinates and uh, starting at that point imagining at that point and then uh, these uh, so it gives you a local terrorization of this vibration and uh, so it gives a connection locally uh, but if if you just look at the part of connection above the point uh, where you define it, uh, the uh, this vibration. So, uh, given a vector field, you lift it to a horizontal vector field here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I. I 
for, for computing to get the, the uh, family index, uh, families index, I will need, a, you need to choose a connection. And in this context, it's, uh, it's better to choose a, a connection uh, well behaved. Okay, uh, so, okay, so, uh, so uh, we have uh, uh, K that will now be our K tilde, or K will be the uh, the vertical canonical line bundle. <coughs> 